guys, welcome to the next Bob's Burgers Burger of the Day recipe. Again, no eyebrows, this might just be a thing. This is actually how I look all the time. Anywho, we're doing the One Man Yam Burger. This is from Season 2, Episode 3, Synchronized Swimming. This all-beef burger is topped with sweet yam slices and a generous portion of candied bacon. Candied bacon probably sounds like a redundant, made-up idea to you, like extra great amazingness, but it's a real thing you'll see makes four burgers. Ingredients are one pound bacon, one third cup brown sugar, one half large yam peeled and cut into eight to a quarter inch slices, one pound ground beef, and four buns. So I've done some work ahead of time like I always do. I actually could not find a yam at the store, and I thought instead of buying a canned yam, which might be kind of gross and squishy, and honestly, watching a lot of Bob's Burgers, I don't think he would have liked that. I got a sweet potato instead. I've already roasted this. I cut it in half and I put it in the oven at about 425 for an hour and a half-ish. And so it's like nice and soft and cooked all the way through. I'm gonna peel it, slice it up, and then cook it kind of like it says in the instructions, but just to get kind of like a nice crispier outside on it, but it's all soft and cooked and done on the inside. And for the bacon today, I'm going to be making rice paper bacon. Again, if you haven't seen any of these videos or any of my videos at all, I make these recipes all vegan and gluten-free. So I wanted to do coconut bacon and I could not find any coconut flakes at the store. So we're gonna do rice paper bacon, should be just as good, but I felt like with that extra sort of coconut flavor, that would've been fun for this burger, but Oh well, you can try it if you like. I only have one sheet of rice paper, that should be fine for the one burger I'm making. Me, I'm using again the All-American Veggie Burgers from Dr. Prager's. And the bun is gonna be this gluten-free ciabatta from Char, Cher. I got this at Walmart. And the fry of choice that I have paired with this, um, I actually just started with a russet potato and I cut it with one of these. And if you have never seen this before, this is how they make crinkle cut fries. So I cut them into crinkle cut fry shapes and I coated them fairly evenly in salt, pepper, paprika, and a smidge of olive oil. They're on a baking sheet right now. I put them in raw into the oven at 400 degrees. And they've been in there for about 25 minutes now. All right, so I'm gonna get started on the rice paper bacon first. So let me move the camera. All right, baking sheet. It's lined with like a little silicone sheet as well. I have a brush from the Asian market for oils and things. I have just one six inch sheet of rice paper and then a plate. I'm going to put some water on this plate and then you just dip the rice paper in so that it's sort of soggy and pliable because right now if I tried to cut it while it's still hard it would just shatter. You want to very very quickly cut it and you don't want the pieces at all to have an opportunity to get stuck together. So I just cut it in half and then I'm cutting it into six pieces and very quickly laying them down. Awesome. Okay, so they're all laid out. Some of them are touching because I did that so quickly, but they'll be just fine. And I'm gonna make my little bacon marinade. So in a little cup here, I'm gonna add some maple syrup, some garlic, paprika, liquid smoke, very important. Pepper. A little bit of salt. And some tamari or soy sauce if you're not concerned about keeping it gluten free. Now, this is what I use when I make all types of bacon. My favorite being like tempeh bacon. And you just brush it on and cook it as I suppose you would normal bacon, but um, for this, since it's candied bacon specifically, and it says to add brown sugar, I'm gonna go ahead and add a little brown sugar so it's extra super duper sweet. Um, the maple syrup is more for maple flavor rather than actual sweetness in the bacon. But I'm only gonna add about that much, like half of a tablespoon together. And now I'm going to brush it on the rice paper with my fancy brush if I can even see it. I'm like trying to get the light to catch it because they're all translucent. This is good to pop into the oven with the fries. I have it at 400. So these are the crinkle cut fries. 
pretty cool. They're you're okay to just hang out right here and cool off a little bit. All right, this pan is heating up. Next, since this is pretty much cool, the sweet potato from earlier, I'm gonna slice it, peel the skin off. I think if I can get two good slices out of this, that should be fine for one burger. I'm gonna add a smidge of olive oil. All right, I'm gonna add the sweet potato in. One corner. I'm gonna try to get everything in here. Cause y'all know I only have one pan. Burger in the middle. Now the instructions on these patties, as I mentioned before, I used them in the first video. You cook them on three minutes per side on medium heat, just like this. This is what the bacon looks like after being in there for about five minutes. I'm gonna try very carefully to flip these pieces over. And I'm just gonna coat them in more of this mixture. And they're good to go back in the oven for probably no more than a minute or two. Intermittently eating fries is important. I always like to toast the buns. There's a little space here that I can start toasting. I'm gonna pull out the bacon. That is all done. So here's the bacon. Break it like that. It's crispy and smoky and tasty, but you're not gonna convince anyone this is bacon. Um, I feel like there are very convincing brands out there. Of course, they all contain gluten, because everything does. But this is a fun alternative, I will say. Speaking of fun, I've got some extra bacon marinade. I'm just gonna put it on the sweet potatoes. Why not? I did this before with this burger. I'm gonna just kind of trim the edges off so that it fits the bun better. Sweet potatoes are finally getting kind of crispy on the outside. I have flipped them several times though. I'm just worried about them falling apart. Alrighty, I think we are ready for assembly. So the book says, bottom bun burger. And slices, Bailey. Fit on there, perfect. Some bacon. It says two to four slices. I think four. Then it says that you can add whatever you think is gonna work with it, but it suggests specifically ketchup and mustard. And the fries. By the way, they're still warm from sitting on my stove top. I can't say that for everybody. I mean, it would just be different time management when you started this. Clearly, I started this earlier than I should have. Already, here it is all done. And as always, I'm gonna cut it in half. I will say from a visual standpoint, this one definitely isn't as cute as the other ones, I don't think. Um, maybe it's because I got ketchup and mustard literally everywhere, but the the inside of the meat is very light, and with the yam slice, it just looks kind of odd. So maybe if I redid this with an impossible patty, it would be better, but oh well. Fry. Fries are good. They're fries, and fries are good. All right. Try this. Pretty good. I will say that the sweet potato flavor does not stand out a whole lot, and honestly, neither does the bacon. It's just sweet. It's like a regular hamburger, but just sweet. And I think that the ketchup and mustard just covers that flavor up. It is still really good though, so I still recommend making this. And if you can find a real yam, let me know how that goes. Alrighty, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope you guys try this out. Next week's Bob's Burgers Burger of the Day recipe is going to be the last one, so stay tuned for that. And otherwise, like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.